Alright, so uh, we're going to be doing a pretty simple wood spirit, quick wood spirit, uh, and we're just going to use a knife today. Because uh, I know a lot of people don't, uh, maybe they just don't have uh, some gouges, chisels, or um, maybe just like the idea of uh, just using one tool. And we're going to be using the uh, knife from Deep Woods Ventures. It's, uh, I believe it's called the Scalpel. And it's uh, just about a one inch blade that's uh, hand forged and uh, it's around $20 free shipping if you're in the States. Uh, you will ship uh, anywhere if you're interested though. So we're going to start here by sketching onto this piece of wood here. Uh, this is uh, found wood that's uh, been dried and I just kind of axed it into a bit of a block shape. Uh, it's just something laying around that I grabbed. Um, this is. Uh, big leaf linden, which is kind of similar to basswood. It is a, a relative, um, but it's a little more inconsistent. Um, hard to say if it's harder or softer. It's around the same. It's just different. Um, some areas are more dense, uh, but it's still very smooth. Smooth carving for the most part. So when you're cutting on all this with your knife, you want to go from f kind of 45 degree angles on each side on each of your cuts to pull out a piece of wood and you're going to be using that kind of two cuts for most of uh, this type of carving you know only on the side here are you really going to be doing straight cuts it's going to be doing stop cuts when you're going into the middle of the piece uh, that's what you'll be doing and in some cases um, you know doing just those two cuts is maybe not enough you need to do kind of three or four cuts they're all going in at 45 degree angles to remove a piece of wood and basically instead of cutting out a v-shape kind of cut you would take out a kind of four-sided uh, pyramid type of shape or, or a three-sided pyramid very specifically um, so if you do just a, t a double cut um, you know you need to have the edges meet up at the, the end and front so if they don't meet up then you do another cut on the end to make them meet and you don't want to make these cuts uh, too deep or too shallow. I'll talk about that more in a little bit. So there's a few different ways you can kind of hold the knife. You can kind of hold it like this. Um, really, it's whatever way you feel comfortable, and that you're not going to, uh, you know, cut yourself, put yourself at risk. Uh, certainly, wear a glove and still be careful because uh, gloves don't protect from stab wounds. So. Yeah, this kind of, again, this way, and this kind of like a chip carving way, which is uh, kind of holding it upside down in a fist. I'll show you that in a little bit. <clears throat> here it is right here. And see, it kind of rock it sometimes, the knife, to get it in there on a stab cut. Um, you can rock the, a tool with its blade, but you don't want to go side to side uh, because it will damage the tip. You'll see me do a lot of kind of mild prying and uh, that's just when I know the wood is uh, ready to go. You don't want to pry out wood otherwise because again you'll get some big chips on the blade and it's very hard to fix. This blade specifically actually um, I had dropped it uh, when I was sharpening it and uh, broke the tip off a pretty big chunk so I had to bring it in some and uh, and then I was carving a pipe with it. It's very hard wood and did a lot of damage to the tip, the edge. Um, so it's smaller than it was and it's also and when you take the tip off you know you'd have to t remove a lot of the uh, knife to get a straight edge back with that tip the way it was so um, I usually end up rounding it over so I have a sharp cut all the way down so here we go so I'm just kinda of doing the regular shape if you've seen my other wood spirit videos um, it, it really is the same idea um, the way you carve and everything, it's just instead of a V-tool you'll be using your knife to make describe the same kind of cut that a V-tool would make and if you're, if you're having issues with any of these cuts um, you know always go to sandpaper if they're not super clean it's much harder to get a clean cut doing a you know using a knife to describe that V-cut than just using a V tool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, the other, if you don't go, if it's not an exact matchup on the depth of the two cuts, then 
Um, if it's too shallow, then there's going to be a bit of a tear out at the end. The wood will still come out, but it won't be clean right there at the at the point of the V. And if it goes too deep, <clears throat> there'll be a, like a line there, a crevice. And um, and in some cases, if you have other details around that, <clears throat> you can the wood will be it'll come out where you don't want it to, basically. Uh, those two deep cuts will line up and it'll end up taking out a chunk you don't want to. So this is a bit of a sloppy carving right now. It's kind of okay. What I generally do is I just, well I'll leave it kind of rough until I kind of have it close and then I'll go in there and I'll try to clean out the cuts a little more. It's a good idea though to uh, practice those clean cuts on your way down. It's very easy after you get the shape that you want um, to make your crevices and details too deep because you're trying to get that clean intersection so you have to find a medium somewhere in there um, and in this one uh, we'll be doing a kind of glaze I'll do the easiest one with wax colored wax uh, but with that one or um, kind of where you cover it with a matte poly and then uh, put a gel stain on top and wipe it off uh, that will cover up a lot of the uh, rough spots and a lot of times when you're carving you're paying too much attention to the carving and um, really you can get away with more rough spots than you think and uh, if you ever get a chance to look at other people's carvings up close and you're looking for uh, the kind of uh, rough spots that you know after you know from carving you'll see that there is are those in there and you would have never seen them if you hadn't looked and somebody had told you so be a little bit forgiving and uh, you can always you know, set it down for a little bit and come back to it later and look at it um, which a lot of times is a good idea anyway because uh, we can get frustrated too zoned in and uh, overwork a part and uh, a lot of times we just you know need to take a break come back to it with a little more relaxed and uh, subjective point of view so I'm getting this kind of mustache, the top of the mustache, and then also I put in the the cut uh, for under his cheekbones, and so that will be beard as well. You don't have to have that. You can have the top of his beard be his mustache, but it's a nice little detail to put in there uh, so there's not just a flat space there uh, down to his mustache. Because uh, we, we don't have the whole face here, of course. Um, I will end up rounding it out some, and uh, it will look pretty much full but you know there's no ears there's no you know and, that, and that's up to you you know you can make the face smaller proportionally to what you're doing I'm going to get a toothbrush right now uh, it's a good tool to have around you know something like a to you know toothbrush make sure it's clean there's my 50-50 uh, alcohol spray uh, to make some smoother cuts but uh, the toothbrush will help get out chunks in there that are you know barely hanging on and just clean it up good idea to use one. And if your carvings get dirty, uh, which they usually do because you're handling it, they'll get a little bit of you know oil from your hands on there by the end of the carving. Uh, you can put a little bit of hand soap, just a light soap on a toothbrush and scrub it down and it'll clean up very well. And you can let it dry and go on with your finishing process if you're going to do that. So you can see here <clears throat> we have most of the uh, the face out um, already, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I start with that kind of brow line, eyes, and nose. So it really helps me uh, triangulate where everything else will be. And also, I just kind of need that, you know, when I make art. That, uh, I need to have something down uh, so I can start to have confidence in the piece. So... I didn't, in this carving, um, I, I didn't really have it super planned out, so there's a little bit of, um, you know, kind of going back and forth from one place to another, and um, I would suggest that you do that anyway, because it's a little bit of a, um, I don't know, a mild way of what I was talking about earlier, of setting the piece down and coming back to it. When you move around from feature to feature, it gives your brain kind of the ability to go back to a spot and reappraise it and have a subjective view. Um, because once we start looking at a, a specific spot, you know, our, our, our brain just starts to, it's like, it's like saying a word over and over again until, until it sounds funny. Um, you know, you just want to kind of keep moving around and keep a kind of 
uh, you know, a view inside your head of, of somebody else looking at it. Which, again, just kind of happens naturally uh, when you stop looking at a part of it for a little bit. So, yeah, I will, uh, I'll put a link in here for, I'll give you a diagram, uh, on, you know, it's on paper, two-dimensional, uh, if you need to get some kind of measurements and whatnot out of this. It's, it's easy to make faces too long, and um, for the most part, they really can't be too short. Very specifically, the nose, how long the nose is, is really going to uh, make your, the face on these, uh, its proportions. So, you know, you can always make it a little bit large at first, and then look at it and take a shave off and see how it looks, and then, you know, maybe go a little further. But since these are, you know, males, um, they can, they can handle some, uh, disproportionate features, some funky stuff. And you want to take advantage of that, you know, uh, the, the best wood spirits are, uh, not exactly handsome. For the most part, they have, uh, you know, what makes them interesting is they maybe have funny features or, uh, they just have character, which is basically, um, you get that character by um, trying to get some depth out of the features even if the whole face isn't super three-dimensional and what I mean by that is um, if you could just kind of carve lines uh, to describe the face or you could go deeper and deeper while you keep the nose while the nose gets longer the eye sockets get deeper and uh, that's, that's what I mean by more three-dimensional and um, so even if it's not super three-dimensional you know, make the nose bigger, make it more of a geometric shape, uh, take a chance with it, and and as well as with the other features. So I'm doing a bit of a, you know, his forehead right here, and the forehead you can basically it just kind of, it's always basically that shape, um, you know, kind of goes it is a little bit low of a hairline, but it, that seems to be much works better than uh, making a higher hairline. It took me a while to bring the hairline down. You know, I had to look at some other people's wood spirits at some point and be like, okay, it looks better when it's lower, because these are they're very hairy fellows. Um, so uh, when it's lower, it's not really describing that um, the actual hair follicles are lower, but that there's more hair and that it is um, kind of maybe coming, falling down a bit over the forehead before going up. So here we're getting the beard out. Yeah, when you're doing um, a bit of curve in these cuts, you, need, you just do one curve at a time for the most part, and you do that in your, in your you kind of sweep your cut, and you try to match it up on the other side. And then to do more complex curves, you basically just match them up one to another. Um, you can get a bit of an, I can get a bit of an S shape on these kind of in one cut, but again, it's very much just in the length of how much, you know, the squeeze of my hand while I'm pulling the knife and kind of curving that. And it's really, it's limited by how much my hand uh, squeezes or if it's, uh, if I'm holding it in the other position, like a pencil kind of, uh, you know, how far, because I lock up the rest of my arm, and if you don't do that, then the, the curves will look really messy, and uh, it really, you just can't really cut it, it's just gonna, you're gonna fly off the wood, so. Here I'm deepening, uh, underneath the mustache, and uh, I'll even go a little bit further, and I'm kind of, at that point, cleaning up the cuts too, trying to get a clean intersection, and Sometimes they put a bit of a lower lip uh, underneath that mustache. And all that is is just a little tiny line, perpendicular line, horizontal line. Now that will describe a mouth in there. But if your mustache, the top of that, is too low, that's too long, then it will look funny if you put a lip in there or a mouth. So that was another thing, I, I guess, uh, in the length of the face. You can get away with a very long... Uh, bottom of the nose to the top of the lip, or top of the mustache, bottom of the mustache, excuse me. Um, 
but oftentimes it needs to be brought up. You need to bring the bottom of the mustache where that point is closer to the low, to bottom of the nose. So because it's kind of a thin piece of wood, I'm trying to go on, on the side there, uh, which will help to give it uh, kind of more of a three-dimensional description, a bit more of a full face. And, uh, you know, you, in wood spirits, because the whole thing with wood spirits is it's like, it's not a body, it's not a full head, it's very specifically kind of just a face uh, coming out of wood. And the hair is everywhere, and it's there to kind of um, blend into the rest of the wood. So we call a lot of other things wood spirits. Um, you know, there are different kinds of carvings other than what I just described, but for the most part, this is kind of what's supposed to happen. And and in that, you can take a lot of liberties in uh, the face and um, the anatomy. And very specifically, is in the case of this one that again the there is no side of the face and even though I round it over it's not even close to what happens in reality but again it works because we're not describing a man we're describing more of a spirit that's a part of this piece of wood and its natural shape or whatever shape it is outside of this carving so again I'm just cleaning up these cuts here and There we go. Yeah, for, for the most part, the rest of this is just going to be um, kind of developing features a little more, getting clean cuts in there. Um, there's the eyes and the hair, uh, which we'll deal with next. Oh, right, but we're rounding this out. So, um, kind of like the mustache, um, we want to round out the top of that hair because, you know, it looks like a hat now, it's kind of strange. So you're going to get a little bit of a curve going on the top of that hair uh, into the forehead. I'm rounding out a little bit more here. Yeah, this also, um, doing the side of that hair and having it very close to the features like the eye, um, it will help, um, as I've learned from a friend in Colorado, it will help to frame the face. Um, yeah, I knew there was kind of an issue that some of my wood spirits worked and some of them didn't, and uh, a buddy of mine was uh, talking about that, and uh, it was a good articulation for kind of what happens with the face proportionally on a piece of wood and in the hair, um, you know, which is, you're, you're framing the face, and you can see there that it's really happening at the, the top of the at the top of the beard that's above the mustache and you know the hairline it's just kind of a circle and that really again frames the face into a certain spot um, you know with these pieces aren't super anatomical or detailed so you want as many clues to the eye as possible that uh, this is a face this is this is what you're looking at you know to draw attention to this part um, Otherwise, you know, it can, it, there's a certain amount of clues you need to keep it from looking like, um, you know, um, some shaped wood on a piece of wood, you know. Um, so you have these kind of contrasty borders, and although there is hair past those borders, uh, again, as I was saying, it's, um, it's, it's, it's the hair, so it's a very different cut that's uh, all organized, and it, it will, uh, blend into the rest of the wood or it will go to the end of the wood in this case <clears throat> I don't do all the hair I blend it into the rest of the wood but even if it went to the side again that would be kind of the hair would be the frame so I'm starting to work on the eyes a little bit here and I'll spend some time in a little bit here drawing out uh, what kind of happens with the eyes because uh, it is kind of hard to see what's going on there it's so small um, but basically you will make a, uh, after you get your eye socket not quite as deep as it should be, um, and then you start to make this kind of basically ball um, or a half sphere kind of teardrop oval diamond shape, whatever you want to call it, uh, in, in where the eye would be. And then you will open up that thing by making a slit in it 
um, a cut into it and then that's where you put the eye you want to practice the eyes a little bit on the way down before you think it's deep enough because you'll probably have to make a few passes I personally do still so suggest trying that and if it starts to get um, too deep you kind of have to um, figure out some sort of uh, middle ground of uh, basically you have to make it more simple you know if, if you're trying to make a detail and it keeps you know the chunk keeps coming out a chunk of wood that you don't want to the eyelid keeps coming off then you just go to uh, something way more simple so here we go I'm drawing the the diamond shape um, again it's kind of the this eye socket there and then you have a diamond in there and it really it is a diamond um, your cuts may be a little bit curved but that's what you're thinking about is again all of these kind of uh, eight cuts to describe a diamond and then you'll go in there very carefully and just cut a little slit in there and you may not even be able to do that that slit is kind of depends on the size and uh, the wood and if it's tearing out then just skip it and the next kind of step in between is that you would just do a stab cut and uh, you know just put a line because you can make um, a description of something on the face uh, without doing a V cut <clears throat> you can just put the, the knife in there and, and especially if you're doing a glaze like uh, like we're gonna do it will show up okay so it's time for the beard and you'll see for the most part I use um, you know this kind of pencil drawing method uh, but I'll switch back and forth depending on where the line is and if you know what kind of curve it is uh, it's another thing to take into consideration because um, like I was explaining earlier with uh, getting a curve out in the squeeze of your hand um, because you can't just free arm it you know a free hand it with your arm I guess that's free arm whatever um, yeah that might that that so you maybe need to turn it around to get a better uh, curve um, everybody has their best directions for curves and so whatever your best direction is you know you might have to flip the uh, sculpture around to get that uh, best direction in uh, where you want it to so the other thing is um, I, I won't when I'm doing it with like a knife I generally won't do as much hair lines um, as I would with a v-tool really depends I guess and it's also a size thing but uh, you know you tend to stylize it a little bit more um, because if you get too many of them in there I mean even I I mean I can't get perfect V cuts I often will go too deep and um, so if I put a lot of hair next to each other uh, it'll end up tearing out uh, the pieces will fall out because uh, the lines are intersecting the cuts are intersecting um, so you can, you can do less and uh, the other thing again is if you're going to do a glaze as I was just talking about um, you don't have to do the V cuts you can just you know draw lines out and um, try to get your knife kind of in there uh, so that it will separate the wood a little bit because mm. kind of the you know you get the the deeper the knife goes the wider it is and so that will make a difference now uh, the wood will stay compressed and mildly separated if you get the knife in there so yeah I mean I'm only doing like three or four lines uh, on each one of these sides of his Fu Manchu mustache and uh, I've seen people just skip you know the uh, the hair description altogether you know if you already have the shape and uh, certainly if you're gonna paint it you know you could paint it on or just not have it at all I mean it's really you guys thought it was a beard I'm sure before I put these lines on there so it means your viewer will too uh, this yeah this stuff is a little bit tricky and you'll you'll see um, exactly how the line thing works that I was talking about of not doing V cuts because uh, when I put the stuff on here you'll see everywhere where um, I kind of went off um, and made an extra cut it will really come out so you want to keep that in mind as well so you can use be be used to your advantage or disadvantage and uh, I'll be doing the the poor man's glaze which is just uh, rubbing on a uh, dark dark finishing wax and then uh, wiping it off a little bit 
and um, all glazing is the same idea it's you know you some people call it nowadays they call glazing um, antique finish or treatment because um, it kind of resembles that a little bit but anyway it basically consists of getting dark colors darker colors in the crevices than there is on the peaks so again the wax is the easiest way to describe it where you'll push it into all the crevices and then wipe off the, the top without going into those crevices and it'll stay in all the crevices and it'll, sh it'll make the details pop um, it only kind of works in certain situations it works very well with uh, you know something like a wood spirit but like if you do say a something that's not very angular it doesn't have a lot of crevices it starts to look a bit strange um, it just doesn't work as well you need a lot of crevices and they need to be consistent so you can also what I did um, when I started carving wood spirits was um, I would take a torch to the wood it's kind of fun uh, it works better with like bears and stuff or animals where they're covered with hair and uh, and they are supposed to be dark but um, it does work with the wood spirit somewhat I do tend sometimes like you do all the hair and then the face looks kinda left out and then you try the face and then the nose and cheeks get all burned so there's that so maybe don't do it on your first wood spirit maybe carve a bear so yeah the rest of the spirits going pretty much the same and you can see as I do the same way as I described the the beard earlier you know those lines and um, oh so the eyebrows here I'm the, another example of not doing V cuts and I'm just slapping them in there I'm not even taking you know trying to be careful with it just pressing them in there and uh, and actually hack it a little bit so there's kind of some random V cuts in there they didn't really come out but whatever I'm not really worried about it so then we'll put a little bit of hair in Yeah, you uh, you could put a lot more hair, as I said before. I mean, you can continue it to the end of the piece, the end of the wood, or you can actually shape it some and then put it on there. But besides that, you know, you can also make it more dense. But I, you know, I wanted to show that uh, you can make it aesthetically work having very few. The other thing you can do is you can really round out the kind of you know description of the hair instead of just doing lines you would uh, round out each one of those kind of things so that they're all kind of these cords and uh, that looks pretty good too so this guy really is, is this is about it it's done and uh, there you can see him under some different light there didn't turn out too bad I've done worse yeah it's good to have a light like this around um, Certainly, it looks nice on camera, but you know, it's uh, with a light wood, it's very hard to tell what you're actually carving. You know, besides the lines, um, you know, get a good good idea of what's happening three dimensionally, and you just can't see that without a harsh, you know, kind of unidirectional light. Um, so, I mean, mine's like right there. You can see that, and it doesn't look quite as harsh as it does on camera, but I can still tell when I'm carving. And get an idea. I've in the past I did some where I didn't know it all. Okay, so f forget about that. Let's move on to this. I fast forwarded this footage a little bit for the sake of everybody's brains. There's a gross rag in there. Um, this is a this is some vintage uh, finishing wax. Yeah, I just get some out there and I'll put it into the the rag. And even though in some parts I'll just put it straight in there, I'm gonna have some on the rag so I can smear it in there. Um, yeah, I got this. Um, this stuff is like 60 years old. It's pretty awesome. It still works okay. I have some newer ones too, but they're not dark like this. So, um, yeah, you can get cheap stains and stuff out of estate sales, and uh, generally they're they're still okay. You know, I've had I had a few that I opened up and then they didn't smell very good. But I mean, for the most part, this stuff is expensive. So if you can pick it up for a quarter at an estate sale, you should do that. Yeah, some of the stains too are crazy because um, 
you know, a lot of colors in America got taken away because they were too toxic. And uh, so really dark, vibrant colors are not around anymore. Spray paint artists will try to find vintage ones specifically for this reason. So I'm just kind of rubbing it down there. And, um, you know, maybe, you know, there's some places where there's a little too much. You just kind of have to control it. And sometimes you have to go back in and put a little bit more if you want to darken up a little feature. Sometimes the eyes, you know, they're not crevice-like enough. But, um, so there we go. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, Garf safe. Mm -hmm.